The flight sim hardware scene is heating up in civilian aviation with the likes of Winwing and now Verbal entering the market with some new hardware. However, today I'm going to be talking about another company, Core Flight Technologies. A company based in Turkey who makes some pretty fairly priced hardware primarily simulating the Boeing 737. Stick around, we're going to check it out. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for watching. It's going to be a bit of a mini series, so if you're interested on checking out some really cool hardware, don't forget to like and subscribe for future videos. This is also not a sponsored video. I've purchased everything seen here myself. So who is Core Flight Technologies? Well, they're a group of aviation enthusiasts who started creating flight simulation modules a few years ago back in 2018. They primarily have Boeing hardware, so if some 737 style hardware is what you're after, Core Flight Technology pretty much has it. The first order I placed with Core Flight was just for a 737 comm radio panel. I wanted to give that a go first to see if I liked the quality. The unit checked all the boxes for me as it was backlit and lightweight, with weight being especially a concern as I'd be mounting it on my DOF Reality P3. It's out of the box, Core Flight gear works with MobiFlight, however there is SPAD support if you want to keep all your controllers in one place. It requires a quick firmware flash, add it into SPAD and either configure the unit yourself uh, or download one of the many snippets that are already published. I loaded up the PMDG 737 to check it out and everything worked as expected. The unit was responsive and had no issues and did exactly what I needed it to do. At this point I used it for about a week and decided I was going to go all in. I ordered up the Glare Shield combo which has the MCP and the EFIS, a nav radio to complement the comm, and the transponder. I didn't order any of the core flight mounting hardware as I was planning on custom designing my own and 3D printing it. This allowed me to organize and fit everything in with the limited space that I'm working with on the motion rig. They offer a variety of metal stands for some out-of-the-box fitment designed around the Logitech Honeycomb and Thrustmaster yokes, and these stands will allow you to slot the core flight MCP and EFIS right onto the yoke. Uh, they have a radio, uh, radio landing gear combo stands, and yes, they do make a 737 landing gear handle, uh, and they even have a more traditional pedestal mount if you're going for something more full size and custom. All of the units have your choice of backlighting between amber and white. I ended up going with amber for my kit. I have the backlighting configured to match and be adjusted through SPAT, and this way as I dim or brighten the in-sim lighting, all of the units are synced up. All of the units are very responsive, and being able to change altitudes on the MCP or tune a radio without any issues or delay. Using the EFIS to change between various functions is quite satisfying. It's nice to be able to set the minimums at a higher elevation airport with a knob instead of a mouse click. I don't know about you, but the less I need to use the keyboard and mouse, the better. So let's run through the differences in construction between the units. Starting with the MCP, it's a fully enclosed unit with a fan for venting on the back. It connects to your PC via USB cable and has a power cable for the lighting and the fan. Uh, just to note, the USB cable seems to be hardwired and not replaceable as far as I can tell, at least without disassembling the MCP, which I haven't done, so I can't 100% confirm if removing the back cover would allow for replacement. The unit feels solid and weighs around 3 pounds. Uh, all of the buttons are rubber with lighting, with the exception of the changeover speed and altitude intervention buttons. Um, these are hard plastic and seem to be possibly 3D printed. It's not a big deal in the least, but it's just something I noticed. Uh, the knobs seem to be hard molded plastic from what I can tell and have a nice tactile bump in the rotary knobs. Uh, switches themselves for the flight director and auto throttle all feel solid as well. Also to note, the auto throttle switch will not automatically disconnect physically on the unit. You'll have to move the switch yourself to match the in-sim uh, switch position on the auto throttle disconnect. So the EFIS is also a fully enclosed unit, uh, again without a user replaceable USB cable. Uh, there's no external power cable required on this one. Uh, again, we have the rubber buttons with the exception of the flight path vector and meters. Uh, and interestingly here, the range and map knobs feel like a molded plastic, however the barrow and mins uh, feel to be 3D printed. Um, they operate and feel just fine, it was just an observation. The only minor caveat I've found is the range and map knobs don't have the center push button to enable traffic or change the centered modes on the PFD, uh, but this is easily worked around with uh, the, either the flight path vector or meters button and a long press configured in SPAD, and it's not a big deal at all. Moving on to the transponder, it's an open unit which is meant to be slotted on a mounting system uh, where you could probably get away with uh, just sitting the MCP or the EFIS on your desk which wouldn't be ideal. There's really nothing for the transponder to stand up on its own. Um, for me, I 3D printed the mounting system you see here, but CoreFlight does have you covered with the previously mentioned stands, just plan accordingly. Uh, the knobs to change the digits on the transponder seem to be 3D printed here, uh, while the gray knob for the transponder modes seems to be the same molded style found on the MCP and the EFIS. There's even an LED for the transponder fail indication. And finally, the radios. Both the common and nav are more or less the same unit, just with a different faceplate and slightly different firmware. Uh, the knobs and buttons on both units seem to be the same 3D printed style that we've seen on the other units. 
when I was flashing the firmwares, I actually repurposed the nav to operate as a sort of navcom. Uh, I set up my SPAD that if I long press the transfer switch, it'll switch the type of radio that it is. It gave me a little bit more versatility on the limited space that I was working with. And to note, sometimes when uh, doing this, the digits will blank out the zeros. I simply just transfer the frequency switch twice to uh, normalize it. So I've had the core flight gear for about seven months now, and I have to say it works great. If you're looking to build out a 737 style cockpit, CoreFlight will have you covered on all the most common modules that you need to get set up. Now I know I mentioned a few times that some of the knobs or buttons were 3D printed, but this is not a negative on the units in any way, it's just an observation. Everything works as intended, feels great to use, and it's keeping my hands on the controls and away from the keyboard and mouse. The whole unit setup at the time of purchase cost me around 1235 US, um, and that was for all five units. I feel it's a fair price for what you get. I previously owned a lot of GoFlight gear about 10 years ago, and the same kit would have cost me around 1400 or more, and that was with no backlining, and not to mention that most of the units were very generic and they didn't really resemble what was in a Boeing aircraft. So that's all for this one. Thanks for watching. Comment down below on what some of your favorite flight sim hardware is. And don't forget, you can also catch me live streaming from the sim right here on YouTube or on twitch.tv forward slash aviatorchris. See you on the next one. Be well and fly safe. Thank you.